of itself coming off a 12 hour ban from twitter i have no fucking idea why between the both of us though i think it was probably because i was ban evading <laughs> because my fucking channel got nuked from fucking orbit because i decided to uh get into a hashtag that had a bit of truth behind it and it was threatening to trend all over twitter Yes, me hearties, I am talking about hashtag Zoe body count. See, what Zoe Quinn did, this is the quick, quick rundown because everyone's covering it to death and I'm not going to bore you with all those super duper details or anything. Uh, what she did was uh, copy and paste stuff from like Trump's accusations like grab him by the pussy and misogyny and all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. And uh, she basically accused this indie dev uh, game developer of a lot of really terrible things, a lot of nefarious acts, if you will. And everyone immediately in his industry fucking turned his back on him. His sister wrote uh, a response to it that seems to just throw him under the fucking bus and it's fucking insane to me because the result of all of that bus under throwing if that's such a term it's not i'm not going to look it up because i know it's not uh the dude fucking killed himself and it's zoe quinn's fucking fault for just throwing an unsubstantiated fucking claim of uh, uh sexual assault not ha not even going to the fucking police about it not doing anything now i i'm not saying that you know chicks have to have like the the written affidavit or anything i would never be shitty and say that right all i'm saying is people lie so with zoe quinn's uh fucking 
history of manipulation, bullshit, and lie and lying. It, it would not shock me at all that she would be creative enough to come up with a convincing rape story. She is a game developer. She is creative. So, yeah. So, because I did that, at MoCast Media is dead. But, not to worry, because totally not Mo Diggity 42 or not Mo Diggity 42 on Twitter is, is where I'm currently residing. And they zucked me with the 12 hour ban. I'm off it now. So, hooray! <laughs> Anyway, enough about my bullshit. I've got some extra special awesome guests. I have my good buddy, freaking Leslie Voorhees. This dude was homeless with me. He's done tons of drugs with me and just all been all around been a fellow degenerate. You know, he's just been great. Uh, what's up, man? Say, oh, oh, he's taking care of the kid. How's it going now? Yeah, it's, uh. Les Voorhees, and uh, we're joined with uh, the little semen demon, Alistair. <laughs> uh, also, OJJ, which is just a last-minute uh, appearance, but we're happy to have you here, man. Say what's up to you. Hey, what's going on? I saw a bunch of people were in voice chat. I thought, how can I use this to my advantage? And I jumped in. <laughs> you got anything you want to hawk? <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe at the end. I feel like at the beginning, that's kind of tacky, isn't it? I want to you know, <laughs> no problem, no problem. that I'm not a complete dickhead, at least, for, you know, to start. <laughs> well, you, you've got to interrupt, like, halfway through and just, like, hawk some random shit. Yeah, I'll just be like, yeah, 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 Zoe Quinn, cool. Anyways, the Nintendo Direct, check out my reaction video on that. <laughs> oh, God, reaction video, Jesus. <laughs> and lastly, we have our extra special guests, ASE Riley and Birdstock. Say what's up, fellas. What's up? How's it going? Chirp, chirp. Zoe Quinn raped OJJ. <laughs> Hashtag himself. <laughs> I'm not on that side of the accusation, but all right. Hashtag him too. We need justice for OJJ. Not to be uh, confused with OJ. We I'm need so to tired of just throwing around accusations. I'm sick of it. Oh, God. the internet to just die. <laughs> oh my god did you know that the bagel boss is trying to start uh his own hashtag it's called hashtag we too because he's a wee little man <laughs> and, <it's, laughs> and i just think man, that's the funniest god. yeah oh yeah man let's rise up at least above five feet you know but, uh, <laughs> no oh, we're winning we, we we're winning we're the winners all right we've got bagel <laughs> boss we've got justin wang like manlets are gonna take over the world I no identify idea. as a manlet, we have despite Tom my Cruise. height. Yeah, Bird is uh, confused. He identifies as a manlet, regardless of being six foot five. He identifies as being five six. <laughs> He's dyslexic. <laughs> you know, uh, also Dick Masterson's a huge white knight for the little man too, and so yeah, you got is. you got a very vocal freaking proponent on your side. So you guys got Rocker, some good Rocker shit Ali, he, He's a manlet. So uh, everything he's ever done that's funny is because he's short, and everything he's ever done that's cucky is because he's not short enough. Oh, dear God. So that's that's a point towards us. Uh, you know what? Hazen Cruz is a manlet. <laughs> um, I don't know what he had like, to say about that. <laughs> everyone's a manlet. I bet OJJ is. Huh? Listen, have you seen the picture of me with the stereo? I am significantly taller than him. I did not. Oh, Asterios is a manlet. Oh, man. I, I'm not a manlet. I'm six foot I'm, straight. Oof. Yeah, that's gross. Why would you add your sexual I don't orientation know about the to the end of that? What? Why would you add your sexual orientation to the end of your height? <laughs> no, no, no. Just like six, six foot straight. You know, like yeah, just on the level. Yeah, six foot straight. Why do we need oh, like, that information? That's a No, way. no. It's like, like uh, it's, it's a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an alignment joke. Or I'm alignment. gonna start saying like, "Oh, I'm five foot eight, gay." <laughs> like every time <laughs> I talk to people. Well, this is the gang up on Mo Hour. Hello, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> no, I, this is great. Thanks for having us. Um, oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for letting us rip on you. Oh yeah, totally, totally, totally. Um, <laughs> all right. So today's topic. Ease up on that mic, lol. Oh shit. 
All right, I'll go. All right, I'll get it a little bit away from me. Is that better for you, Gabraham? <laughs> uh, but today I invited y'all to talk about uh, drugs, drug use, homelessness, and life in general. I figured that was, I figured that would be uh, a good topic to talk about since uh, we're all we've all experienced that at one point or another. Mm. Uh, yeah. so shit, uh. Riley, since you're the guest, uh, since you're the first guest, go ahead and start. Uh, what, what do you think about drugs and homelessness? I'm experiencing We're... drugs right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got Me like too. six hits left on this weed cartridge. I'm gonna pass it to Bird actually, so I feel like he hasn't smoked. Uh, he hasn't smoked with us today. Um, no, I don't know. I like drugs. Drugs are fun. I, I like weed. I, I don't think that uh, everybody out there should be claying themselves with like acid and weed and whatever else all the time, but I like to smoke. So pot would definitely be your drug choice then, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, yeah. I love weed. I love the like, shit out of it. The, I, I've only tried cocaine twice, and one of the times I tried cocaine, like I went to sleep because I got bored. And that's not how I was told that worked. And then the second time I tried cocaine, I just got angry that I couldn't find where I had lost my weed. So I spent the whole night stressed about like where my weed went. And that's kind of how I know for sure that weed is my drug of choice. <laughs> I had a lot of, like I had the opportunity to be doing tons of coke, but I was like, fuck it, where's my pipe? I know I had weed. Uh, no so shit, right? Weird. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, it's, no, it's, no. it's crazy what you fixate on when you're in a different state of mind than the one that you're accustomed to, right? Like, uh, I've done, like, fucking just tons of cocaine uh, back in my day. <laughs> just to, uh, and, uh, uh, Wesley here fucking knows exactly. He's got a ton of stories of us just doing tons and tons of blow. But, Hell yeah, white girl, what the, up? The entire time, though, man, I'm just thinking to myself, Jesus, I wish I were just high or drunk. Because it, I always it became... just wanted to be, like, down as soon as up. Oh, I, yeah. I like the feeling of state. Like, I like knowing what I can deal with and what I can handle. So, yeah. like, if I'm smoking weed, like, I can decide how fucked out of my mind I get, or I can decide, like, how mellow it goes. But if I'm fucking doing this thing that could kill me and I don't know much about it, like, I just, I'm too anxious to even have fun with it, usually. Like, weed you can't overdose from, so, like, I can have 12 brownies and really fuck up my weekend, but not have to worry about Because I did that in Chicago uh, some amount of time ago. We, we just got back from being gone for 20 days, starting with, like, Road Rage Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, we just got back yesterday. So all of that was one, like, day for me, I'm going to say. That was, like, just a day in my life. Oh, god damn. So, like, just because of the edibles or what? Just all, all the drugs and alcohol the entire trip. Started oh, with man. With Cheetos and ending with, like, the edibles that we got rid of yesterday. Oh, dude, I, I, I can totally sympathize with you. There have been, like, great, but... there's... So in some years of my life, I, I'm missing entire months of time of like, what the fuck was I doing this? What did I fuck? I think I might. I, I call myself not an addict in that I didn't lose any jobs uh, or anything like that during my heavy drinking and drug phase. But at the same yeah. time, I have nothing to corroborate this because I did lose a bunch of jobs during those times. Well, see, do so I? There, there is. Do I do so maybe I have, maybe there's a correlation that I'm just too stubborn to recognize. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, but him... did you lose the jobs or did the jobs lose you? A little yeah, bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> so Cause... since I got fired before the, the month of it, does that mean that I am an addict? Or do I get a pass on that? Yeah, because I got fired during the month of it, it's so a... I would be the addict. You're the addict, yeah. Yeah, you, 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 lost can, you could be. Bird. I didn't lose a job because of my addiction to drugs and alcohol. Neither did I. But you <laughs> lost a job while being addicted to drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just, Mo, you're pointing out that Bird is a drug addict, and I think we've been <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm getting from this. 
is. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I, I too am an addict, man. I pretty much just smoke weed every single day, and I've just been stoned since I got back to my mom and dad's house. I was like, oh, fuck this, man. I, I got to do something about the reality of me being 39 years old, going to back to live with my mom and dad, because work just isn't around anymore. And, uh, uh, yeah, it just... Uh, it's, this it's is weird. Trump's America. This is America. Uh, <laughs> dude, this is... I, I don't know what the difference is, man. Like, it's been like this since W, and it's been like this through Obama, and now it's just Trump, so it's sort of like meet the old boss... Uh, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, in my opinion. I haven't Really? Felt That's that. actually an interesting perspective. Well, like, I, I think I'm older than most people, so my opinion's a little bit different, yeah. but... That's uh, a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I can't so, understand. I can't possibly, on my own, understand the nuance of working, or, like working and living through several administrations. Because I'm twelve. <laughs> so. well, no, don't worry, you got time. Uh, may you live in interesting times. It's my favorite proverb and curse. <laughs> I like that. Anyway. Uh. Well, shit. Um. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry for the tangential. Offshoots. Oh. No, no, don't worry about that, man. We got plenty of time. I'll just edit all the bullshit out. Um, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, it's Swag. It, it's kind of like a, I, I've been homeless like a number of times, right? If I just go by my definition of homeless, I think it cumulatively on the streets a couple of months throughout the last uh, – for uh, like the last uh, handful of my 20s and early 30s. But if I go by the according to Hoyle definition of homeless, uh, it would be from when I was 24 to, oh, almost 32 years old, man, because I was just doing nothing but couch hopping with the occasional uh, peppering of having my own apartment and then just losing it because uh, – uh, the jobs don't pay enough, or I just don't have enough to live, and it's it's fucking hard, man. It, it and then uh, and then we just sort of uh, I, I lose focus, or something bad will happen, and I'm one of the percentage of Americans that if uh, a five hundred dollar bill just dropped in my lap, I would be financially devastated. And yeah, that's led to me having a couch hop for several years. And uh, it, it's tough. I, I got my ups and downs, but I, I think I'm definitely on the upswing right now. But it's it, it's been a little bit of an experience, and I wouldn't exactly say that everyone should do a round of homelessness because it builds character. Honestly, the lessons you learn on the streets when you when you're older a little bit, you kind of look back and you think to yourself, "I didn't really need to learn it that way." Hmm. You say the true homelessness was the friends we made along the way, then. <laughs> <laughs> Go OJJ, that, man. OJJ yeah. with the breaking of ten, uh, the the breaker of moments. <laughs> no, but like absolutely. I just fuck with you, buddy. Yeah, uh, uh, Brian, I fuck, man. We've been like couch hopping and fucking homeless together, man. Oh, what do you think about being homeless? Because you were, you were on the fucking streets way, way longer than I was. Oh, you just, God. you, you chose. Uh, uh, well, like, let me give y'all a little bit of context, real quick. So I moved up to Austin, Texas, with my buddy oh, here. Oh God. And uh, we'll fast forward, fast forward. We lost the fucking place we were living in, and we had to fucking squat, right? Now, if I had a backpack full of clothes and just my base and amp, I would have been able to rough it, and I would have been living La Vida punk rock with him. But I moved up there with the sole intention of not having to go back to my mom and dad's place grabbing all my shit again because I had no concept of owning a fucking vehicle. I've, al I've only ever been public transportation, right? But um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah. I had all my shit with me and we were living in a fucking squat we were squatting in what seems to be like a, a an abandoned pump house and well, i had I, all I, someone uh one of the other uh one of my other train kid buddies mentioned that it actually used to be like a i don't know i've heard it's it, it used to be like a, a kind of washroom rest stop for the conductors or some shit 
yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. but it was, yeah, that concrete shed that, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> you know, this like shit... the shittiest squat that I've lived in and I've squatted in New York City. You know, uh, oh man, uh, you know, that place would have been fine if we just like, if we weren't so fucking high and drunk and full of despair, if we just like pulled a few bucks together and got a caulking gun and some caulk, we could have fucking oh, chopped up all the fucking cracks in the damn roof and the wall, kept the cold out and kept the fucking rain out, man. <laughs> But alas, we were too we we were too busy, and you know, it, homelessness in in Austin, Texas, it's a little bit weird. It's a mixture of fun it, and despair. At least that's what I really, got out of it. It's really fucking easy. Yeah, to, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is to get stuck in, especially like, and I mean, like other cities too. I mean, fucking Portland, um, you know, but uh uh austin especially austin was one of the was one of the cities that i found that um i didn't want to stay but i just couldn't leave like i could be in jersey and be like yeah this place fucking sucks and be out like by the end of the night i I could sit in sit in austin like downtown on 6th street and be like yeah this fucking sucks but i'll still be here tomorrow and like, Maybe it's just Texas. Uh, the guy that I, like helped me like learn how to be homeless is because he uh, his name is Brad Carter and he runs a prank call like uh, Illuminati called Phone Losers of America. <laughs> so he wrote a book about it, and uh, his whole thing was he lived in Galveston, Texas, like as a homeless guy for like oh a Galveston's long time. oh Galveston's Galveston's easy. oh Galveston's not too far from me at all, man. Yeah, I guess, I guess like, that's like where it, what pulled him into homelessness was just bouncing around to different places in Texas and then like liking Galveston. And I, I found, I found like a lot of a lot of people's, uh, ex, I guess, experience uh, being homeless, like, like, it, it, a lot of the time varies on kind of what you go out with or what you like have with you. Like, I in in like ten or so years, I never like went without an instrument, whether yeah. it was like a guitar, or ukulele, banjo, whatever. Oh, that's um, awesome. And, um, like, I mean, I'm not going to say that I never asked for money, but that was my preferred method. And, like, when you've got, like, uh, when you've got, I wouldn't say necessarily, like, well, I mean, I guess a talent, a skill, or, like, something that you're offering, whether you're making, like, the jewelry or, uh, you know, like, whatever wire apps you're playing music or, or yeah. um, I've got a buddy of mine that uh, he's still out um he's just traveling right now he's uh need to find that art piece actually but he he does these like geometrical um like uh what is it sick geometry art and like just very precise very like mathematical (laughs) and uh now right now he's traveling around just doing his designs in larger scales uh throughout cities Kind of like Banksy, and, uh, like just the random art everywhere. Kind of, yeah, but it's it's. I guess there's it's it's not all the same, but it's the same concepts. I guess it's all like that, like geometrical, like ovals and like triangles lining up, and just kind of like uh, I don't know, just there's weird uh, symbology. I'll have to, I'll see if I can find a picture. Or something he's done, but uh, but but uh, what I was getting at basically is like I, I feel like if you if you've got something to offer, it makes it a lot more bearable. Um, as far as like surviving out there, and another thing that I found again with Austin is that there's, well, I mean, I guess really Texas, uh, but specific specifically Austin was the um, resources for the homeless yeah right there um yeah it, the, uh, it, it was... the drop-in centers like i mean there's 20 like there's there's like a whole bunch of groups that come out uh independently that give out whatever food and all that but the the drop-in centers and i'm pretty sure i took you there oh yeah um, dude uh i never went hungry not one day in austin even like, even you have when to... we were in the bad section 
uh, when we're living. You that have asshole. to try to starve <laughs> in Austin, <laughs> and and I mean they've made it a little a little bit easier to go hungry now. Like they're they're trying to change up laws and like that like these church groups or or whoever can't pass out food to the homeless, um, which is really weird because if I'm not mistaken, recently. Um, they passed a law that allowed the homeless to sleep out on the sidewalks and like all this stuff. And I'm like, I kind of wish that that would have been there when I was out there because yeah. you can get a fucking ticket for just sitting down. That's uh, so weird that we do that and anyway. The, that we and penalize. that starts a whole loop. Um, yeah. With like, so you get your ticket, you're not going to fucking go to court. It's a fucking misdemeanor ticket, whatever. So week, two weeks, a month goes by, you're sitting on the side of work again. This time you got a open beer. And they're like, yep, you got an old warrant for uh, last time you're sitting down, and now you're going to stay the night in jail. You go to Judge Coffee or whoever the, the guy is, and then he fucking, he's like, okay, well, you know, if you do community service, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, sure, because, you know, you want to go and get back out and go get fucked up and forget about the community service that you're never going to do mm -hmm. and then the vicious cycle of well now you've got a warrant because of this and then go back and yeah it's the way that they're dealing with it um makes no sense and i i sometimes i really wish that i was uh able to articulate better and uh just like be a politician <laughs> oh man dude i, like, I know this is how you're supposed to do it <laughs> i know exactly what you're talking about man it is it's a, almost a, it, it's a deliberate system that they put the homeless in you know you can't get a you can't get a job without a home but you can't get a home without a job so you're sitting there yeah. trying to get a fucking job but while you're there, you're on the fucking streets, and now the cities, they pass things, uh, they pass ordinances like uh, uh, it's okay for businesses to put spikes on the fucking benches and junk. Yeah. Uh, or, California. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. The, oh, defend dude. Defend yourself. Yeah, dude. The, the, defend it's, myself. It's, yes, defend yourself. I it's hate defensive architecture. Form. I left California for a goddamn reason. They're all terrible people, and I don't want to be associated with them. Why did they do it? Because they, they hate the homeless. Why like, do they hate the homeless? What's going on in the economy? There's just a lot of you them. Like I don't know. Like, I, I didn't grow up near homeless people. I visited oh, L.A. a lot. Of you. Well, I didn't, <laughs> like, I didn't meet any homeless people until I worked at a gas station. At night, why, and then they why wandered your around. People hate the disenfranchised poor. <laughs> we are listen. You have not been homeless, all right. That's just for me, Mo, and Mo's friend. We're the homeless. Here. You have to defend yourself <laughs> as the people who are making us homeless. No, he I don't. Had no. I don't know. I think it's dumb. Like L.A. will throw around the homeless between all the surrounding counties. Like they'll just like pick them up. The police like redistribute after booking. Yeah, that makes that's that's weird. Yeah, um, there was a... the wire touched on that. Really, that's weird. Yeah. Seasons. Well, because each season's a different deconstruction of Baltimore's justice system. Any, anyway. But um, I don't know. At a certain point, I think they passed a law where it was like, guys, you just got to leave them alone or find a better system for it. And I don't know if that means they're changing how they deal with the homeless, but it means they kind of have to. Like, they well, can't. Like, isn't it a weird thing for it to be illegal? Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. <laughs> At this ridiculous. point, I'm just done with the bit of blaming the homeless. No, um, <laughs> I think it would be great if I could just. Sorry, you cut out there. What'd you say, bud? Public resources stuff. I want the public resources. I'm a big fan of Ted Kaczynski. Yeah, I know, and I'm scared of that. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> I think that you should be able to live off the grid and not in like a pampered, like Ralph uh, Emerson Waldo kind of way where he's like, oh, yeah, I live on a pond. And I'm, I'm, I never use society's tools except that I go grocery shopping every three weeks. Like, fuck, fuck yourself. <laughs> right. You yeah. guys are talking about the Unabomber. I got to get away from this office complex. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Dude, uh, uh, fan. It goes into the topic, though. Oh, he my God. House in the woods. But he wasn't homeless. He built a house in the woods. That's, I mean, 
He didn't like have an apartment or like a home. Yeah, but he no, had the money but, to I mean, go if build he built the house, a house. He built the house. He was literally there, like, a, like a professor at the university. Yeah, Berkeley. He was just a, uh, what is it? Weird? He's a weirdo, you could say? Well, what is he, he? Left, he a strange he fella? Because nobody would listen like an eccentric? People were yeah. like dismissive of him because of his age. People were dismissive of him because he smelled like fucking sour milk and was weird. <laughs> That's also <laughs> fair. Probably that too. Was he also a product of uh, MK Ultra? Wasn't he a part of that program? Or um, am I thinking absolutely. Of, uh, or am I thinking of the political other guy? dissident? Is always an MK Ultra failed no. experiment. No, like there's actual connection to I think uh, either him or maybe I'm thinking of Timothy McVeigh. It, it's one of those two, but one of those two was actually a, a participant, a, a, a test subject in the MK Ultra experiment. So I, I Ted, believe Ted was in a like fake science experiment done by his college. It was a Harvard, real science it experiment. It was uh, during Korea. There were a bunch of POW pilots of ours who had went down. Yeah, and. I don't even know what they were trying to find out exactly. Well, they just kept telling him his pee pee was small. But what they did was. <laughs> they <laughs> they did. Uh, who's being chased by the police right now? No, That's me. I mean, just... there's crows, police sirens, fire. It's just, it's just how it is over here. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but so the execution of the study was essentially they had Ted Kaczynski write down all of his deepest feet, like everything and about himself, like the most personal things, just completely deconstructing himself. And the idea was they would share it, it and read another classmate's deconstruction of themselves. But what really happened is when they got into the room where the reading was supposed to Ed gave his most personal fears and everything to this guy who completely destroyed him for it. Ed yeah. just went through it and fucking belittled him for, yeah, I think, told him six PP hours. Small. Yeah, not hard. PP small. <laughs> that was what I got out of it. He kept telling him his PP was small. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but, Jesus uh, fucking Christ. <laughs> that's why he went off and had to be a suicide, or had to be a, uh, a bomber, a unibomber, you know? <laughs> Yeah, he sent people packages full of nails and stuff, right? Uh, a little note well, on it saying, surprise! Got you! Too. Tricked you! Pranked you! <laughs> See, I think everything he did was very on purpose. People like to meme on it, like, oh, he made bad bombs. It's like, nah, this guy graduated Harvard at 16. His bombs were really good. Oh, yeah, I mean, the whole point is like a fragmentary grenade, right? You want to get a bunch of shrapnel everywhere to get inside people's yeah. limbs and torsos and cut them up. Exactly. That I way should not be talking about this at my office. Let me you, go somewhere you else. Really, this is very funny. <laughs> we keep doing it. Yeah, I didn't know we were going to talk about domestic terrorism shit. I'll have to put that in the description as well. <laughs> hey, whatever. Content warning. Oh shit. List. Oh yeah, this this is going to get me put on the list if I'm not already. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with that, really? Oh no, if you're not on the government watch list for some reason or another, you're not living life correctly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get back to the subject at hand here. So, I used to do handfuls of mushrooms, and I loved loved LSD. Uh, have any of you taken LSD or mushrooms before? Yes. I have taken oh, LSD too many times. Once again, please wait for me to leave my office. <laughs> 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 All right, I left my office. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, I remember doing a lot of LSD one time where the, the world sort of started to dissolve and devolve into uh, particles and atoms, and I was able to start seeing the universe, like the makeup of it, and I was one with it, but something slapped me back down to reality, and it's like I started having a fucking panic attack while I was at the peak of my my fucking high so it really fucked me up for like a few days because i thought nothing was real and i thought that i was just a, a bullshit uh illusion of someone's fucking uh of someone's fucking imagination it freaked me out wow. that bad but uh and i did a lot more acid than i thought i did because i thought it was just like maybe one to two hits my buddy said oh no he did about like 
three, maybe even four dabs of that stuff on each of those things. And like, dude, I eat like four or five fucking tabs. So I think I might have did upwards of like 15 hits of acid one night. <laughs> he's still amazing. tripping to this day. I want to try that. Uh, well, you kind of do, but you kind of don't at the same time. Because oh, I'll be man. honest with you, it took me like almost a decade to finally like start noticing that I'm not uh, noticing the residual effects anymore and I'm a little <laughs> bit coherent but I yeah. do I, I'm, I, I think it maybe when I'm like a bit more older I'm going to probably start sounding like Ozzy half the time I'm already <laughs> have I'm already having trouble remembering people's fucking names, and that's supposed to be the easiest part, and I forget what I'm doing half the time, and I, I think it's because I get stoned all, every day, and uh, I mean, I'm sure that's a contributing factor to it, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a fun ride for me when I finally get into uh, late age or older age. Christ. Are you excited I, I to least... turn into Ozzy? Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Like, if I get if I get his memory problems, I'm not going to remember why I don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> it, you know that's, that's right. I mean, shit, man. Uh, uh, one thing might lead to another. I might get Alzheimer's, but you know what the best part about Alzheimer's is? You meet new people every day. <laughs> so I'm not going to be worried about too much. <laughs> that's adorable. I love that. <laughs> hey, Riley, you should not worry about old age anymore. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, uh... Oh, uh, man, kill me at 30, man. <laughs> Fuck me up. I'm like, trying to zoom into the sun. I'm not trying to, like, live long. I'll put it to you this way. Uh, 30's not too terribly bad. I think parts of my life started to improve. Like, I I, I don't know if I would do my late 30s, my That's early... What's the worst year? Oh, oh, God. Uh, what was your worst year? What age? Man, uh, oh, worst year, worst year, I think the worst year of my life was uh, from 24 to 27. Uh, I have like three <laughs> years that just fucking sucked because I kept so I'm like, gonna re I'm gonna I, I, I was, well, yeah, because so I was. Basically, I, basically I, what you're saying is like the, the first couple of years you knew me, um, well, like being that, the bad influence. Oh, well, that, oh, that was. Kidding. That that was a, that was coincidental, and I've been I've been called a bad influence before on <laughs> Mr. Leslie here, because apparently, according to some people, he wasn't doing drugs and drinking before he met me. Not at all. <laughs> so not my fault that he started hanging out with me and he just conveniently started doing those things. I just wanted a partner and you know I think you're that. a good influence, Mo. You, you know, every me. silent Bob needs a J. Oh indeed, Bob indeed. Happened to be yeah. the J. Okay, don't be, gay. don't be don't be gay, Sparky. Don't be gay. No, heterosexual uh, life mates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah life mates. <laughs> There's nothing gay about it. All right, all right. Um, uh, Riley, what, what's a uh, uh, what well, drugs uh, have you done? Oh, oh, uh, I've done. A, hold on. All right. Moved past the thing. Okay, go ahead. We, uh, we were talking about like, fuck, I don't remember now. God damn. Jay it. and Silent Bob. No, it was way before that. I've oh. been trying to follow uh, like topics, but then we just homeless shelters. Yeah. Anyway, uh, drugs I've done. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've done. <laughs> Acid. I've done mushrooms, coke. Uh, I've tried math. There were some high schoolers who wanted me to. I was in high school, so I was like, "All right." Um, let's see. I smoke weed a lot. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I drink. Like, I don't know. I like drugs. Drugs are fun. I'll probably try anything once. Like whatever. Right, right. And, you know, there's nothing really wrong with that. Personally, I do feel that I think everyone should do like one or two drugs in their lifetime just to get like, just to see what the big deal is, right? Like, just Donald don't Trump do what I did. Not doing drugs. <laughs> what did oh, you yeah. do? Oh, God. Jesus, bro. That's a personal question. Well, okay, wait. Mo, uh, no, you were there for the start of it, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so. I mean, pot, but, uh, Mo and I did yeah, a lot of coke. 
for yeah. uh, for a while. Yeah, well, he was um, he was one of my coke buddies. Um, that, 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 those are actually uh, the guy. I can't think of his name. I just always remember him as Barbados. But, yeah. Uh, he was the guy. That's a good sign. And uh, he'd be like, hey, like, you know, like, come on in. Like, it's, it's therapy time. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, he, yeah. <laughs> we just get high and talk about our feelings. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. And uh, we watch shitty movies that, you know, like I would never watch sober or high. Uh, but, oh, dude, uh, the, yeah, my, my dealer was my roommate. <laughs> the Master the Master P movie. <laughs> Master P, I don't remember that one. Uh, like you Rico guys ever seen or... Slow West? No, I've never heard and, of that. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, uh, so, yeah, Coke, what, um, I, I was a, I was a pretty, uh, pretty avid tweaker for a little bit, uh, while I was, uh, out in Austin, um, heroin. Uh, basically, I think... Gabe wants to know what the big deal is about heroin. Uh, like what's the draw um, that? What's the cool kick in the what's, what's so that? I mean like I like sleeping and dreaming, so I mean maybe there was that, but like after a while that really didn't uh work out as much. Um Yeah. It it became more at least for me, um I feel like I feel like 50% is too low of a level, like maybe 75, 80% of it was the um, the ritual behind it, like the actual, like, cooking it up, putting it in the needle, and then blah, blah, blah. Yeah, chasing um, the dragon. And, um... Well, see, no, I get yeah, that, because it, I like to just pack a bowl of weed, man. Like, I don't care that I can take an edible or there's vape pens. Like, I just want to smoke out of a bong. Like, it's just something I like to do, like, grinding up weed, putting it in the bowl. Like, it's the ritual. Yeah. Yeah, the ritual is always the most fun part of it. Like the anticipation and yeah. the uh, the aftermath are the two my two favorite parts. Like uh, doing the drug is fine, but like the the stuff uh, associated with it, that's the stuff I look forward to the most. Uh, yeah, and see, and I I I think um, what drew me to it first. Um, it's that fucking Nirvana song about a girl. It's always about a girl. Um, chick fucking wanted to like wanted to bang and bang, so we did the shit and then that and then it just like kind of it solidified in, in my mind that that was oh this is a sex drug, uh, which is totally wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, your brain um, your brain started uh, rewiring it to the reward center of your brain that's associated exactly. with sex. So yeah, it got you by the boo boo there. But um, I eventually I, I moved off from it. I think when I was in Wait. when I was in uh, Austin, and uh, I was like climbing rooftops and squatting random places and shit. Fucking uh, and back when when the speed was actually really speed and not like whatever the fuck. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, I I I wound up getting stuck on that and um. I, I I don't know if part of it was the uh, drug induced psychosis uh, going on, but um, I'm, I, I, did you ever meet Did you ever meet uh, the big gay juggalo named Pinky? No, 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 no. I I didn't get to meet the juggalos in fucking Austin. I, okay. I and they're they're the ones that were responsible for getting our old squat shut down, right? Yeah. Oh uh, god. Well, okay, not 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 Pinky specifically, but basically the the jug of hose. Uh and uh what? what's his fucking name? Uh bonkers, whatever the fuck he went by. Well, yeah, don't no, worry, okay, we, we so, can't fact check what? you, so you guys went to uh, war man. with juggalos? <laughs> no no but oh. funny enough i actually wound up being and it being like an unintentional ambassador between the train hopping like dirty kids and the juggalos of austin the cold war something like that Let's yeah see. but um you yeah, had to they, do something or there, there would be a rumble they'd start people start snapping fingers oh yeah no, we were gonna start dancing at each other 
Oh yeah. Pulling out their switchblades and they're breaking their bottles of Fago. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, uh, what, what's the? Uh, go ahead and uh, wrap up the story, Brian. I, I don't even remember yeah, where I was getting. You got me off on uh, on the squat with Juggalos. Uh, no, I've I've done too many drugs, but um. Oh yeah. <laughs> more, more specifically, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up after this little story. Uh, I actually do you remember... really like your stories. Don't wrap them up. <laughs> do you uh, do you remember the? Okay, so there's this there's this really crazy like Japanese like pop punk. Well, I guess maybe more than maybe just punk. Uh, punk band called P Lander Z, and uh, they're kind of like. They're 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 more so like all over Austin, um, and then there's some there's this band called the Octopus Project. So it's um, I want to say it was St. Patrick's Day, and uh, me and my ex had uh, quite a few sheets of the um, uh, what the fuck? It's not the paper. It's uh, the shit dissolved. I can't think of what it's called, uh, but it was it was it was like pure LSD. Um, Holy jelly shit. tabs yeah like gel tabs oh and, nice um, oh, i love like, gel. I, I love gel man i've only ever done gel tabs so um so we're we're going out and like you know we're, we're trying to get rid of some but it's it's during south by southwest so like we're like whatever we're gonna have fun and uh uh we probably ate about like five before we got on the bus went out, uh, tried to convince the uh, people at the venue that my dog was, in fact, a service dog. Um, and uh, they said even if she was a service dog because of the noise, they wouldn't want to let her in because of oh. noise level, blah, blah, blah. So I leave her, I leave her sitting outside with, with, uh, with a friend of mine out there. He's out spanging and shit. And uh, – so we go in, and I just turn around, and this fucking cunt of a whore just, like, shoves about another 15 or 20, like, into my mouth. Like, ninja dosed me. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, 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 like I would have been totally fine with it if I would have been aware that it was about to happen. And I'm not going to, I'm not about to spit out that much acid. <laughs> like, that's a fucking travesty waste. So we're sitting, and Octopus Octopus Project is like starting to tune up. The chick's got a theremin. They do crazy like synth shit, and uh, I swear to God, the chick's sitting there doing her theremin, just like staring at me, and like the way she's pointing with like doing the woo, like I, she I I was personally convinced that she knew that I was tripping, <laughs> and it proceeded <laughs> to be the greatest show that I think I've probably been to besides like. I mean, a couple of the Guar shows, but like the greatest show I've been to under the influence. And, um. uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, wound up making a complete fool of myself in front of P. Landers Z wearing a hospital mask, forgetting that they're Asian and a whole like, lol, SARS. So they're. Like, oh my God. Whole. Dude. And I was just tripping. Like, I didn't mean to like be an ass, but I was. Oh, well, story of Clay Early. Oh, dude, uh, I, I fucking trip balls at Ozfest 2000, uh, getting to see fucking Static X and P like, uh, I, I, I took some acid at the beginning of the concert, right? And we were running around, and I thought that uh, the stuff wasn't fucking getting, I uh, wasn't about to hit me because I start, but I started feeling funny right as I was walking toward the second stage of Disturbed, right? And Disturbed set was fucking awesome because it was first album Disturbed. Like, it was uh, first album Godsmack Disturbed, uh, fucking um, uh, uh, Static X. I think it was second album Soulfly that was there and all sorts of shit. But we uh, uh, we got done with, uh, with Disturbed, and we went over there, and that, when the fucking acid was starting to hit me, I, I went to the main stage, and that's where P.O.D. was playing. And, uh, Did since, you have a God like, experience? No, no, I didn't have a God experience. I didn't have Jesus. a God experience. Will you shut the fuck up? 
Uh, no, uh, uh, I did have a, a really positive experience, however, man. Like, it was, uh, you know, metal bands are mostly rah, 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 bitches and, and bitches and booze and, and drugs and all that stuff. But POD, it was sort of like, it was like the American flag. The, uh, all the flags of all the nations of the earth were being flown at the POD fucking concert, or at the POD set. And as uh, they were getting into Southtown, the fucking, uh, w- when the fucking guitar started, uh, the fucking air just started vibrating. And it's like I felt and saw the music while it was oh, fucking yeah. happening. And that was the peak. Uh, like, yeah, th- that's what I knew that it was going to be just a fucking great concert. It was like, from, cause from there, it was just fucking great. And POD is a lot better live than it is, than they are on their albums, too. Their albums are pretty okay. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of Christian rock, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, man, a great fucking live show. And seeing the air vibrate and seeing the, and feeling the music and like the collective, uh, consciousness of the people, that was an experience. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about uh, you, Riley, or OJJ? Do you, do you have any, like, experiences on drugs that you want to share? Or any bouts of homelessness? Um, let's see. <laughs> the other day, a man drooling banged on my car window, and I was like, wow, that's that seems – that's no good for him. That's too bad. <laughs> that <was so> <laughs> Dude, I, I was sitting on a I was sitting on a bus bench one uh one year like during the real uh Riley I think we were talking about like what were my shitty years. Well, this is one of the stories from my shitty years, right? Yeah. Well, I was sitting... I, oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to know when to kill myself, and you said thirty wasn't the right year. Oh oh oh! Your Honestly, shitty years started at twenty four, so move it down to there. Yeah yeah. Thank well, you. dude. Oh, okay, okay. Well, honestly, uh, just wait till you're about 35, man. And well, 24, you, can... you said. That was the worst. No, no. That's the beginning of the bad year. No, that was that was the beginning of the bad years for me, but I, I, oh. I, I, I managed to pull my plane out before I fucking nosedived into the fucking ground. Because I, I had, during my uh, during uh, one year, this is the, the peak of the misery start of this, right? My roommates moved out in abruptly out of my apartment so they can smoke pot and play world of warcraft and it, it was going to they were moving uh, in with my uh, with the roommate's boyfriend's parents and they shut the fucking lights off on me while i was away from work and i fucking sat there like not being able to cook so i i had hot dogs and, and tortillas and some mustard so I ate fucking cold hot dogs uh, uh, with mustard in the fucking dark. And I had a knife next to me, and I fucking sat there with the knife on my wrist, just like going, all right, man, let's just fucking do this. And I didn't, and I just went to bed. I just felt sorry for myself for a while, but uh, I, I managed to get out of it. I'm glad. <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was the closest to actual suicide I've ever been. But then he met this the is Leslie. A lightweight episode. This huh? is a fluffy comedy podcast. Yeah, what the fuck? I thought this was a comedy oh. podcast, Mo. Is it? Is it <laughs> no, a comedy no. podcast? Does it have to be? No, no. no. I mean, we, it can be. It can be whatever we <laughs> want. Really, honestly, like I, I figured I mean, that we can. Could, I, can I tell you yeah, really I'm fucked just, up dead baby joke? I'm just joking. Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, like uh, the whole purpose of like a. Uh, I, I guess the tone of the show is oh, like. No, I'm, just, I'm just jazzing. Great. Oh, okay. All right, all right. My bad. My oh. bad. <laughs> no, don't my, I'll, I'll edit all this shit out later. I sort of showed up late to all this. But ah. My, my uh, what's it called? Advice for suicide is stream it live so people can laugh at it later. Oh yeah, shit! I, yes. uh, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, you're missing it. You're missing it. The super chats. Imagine the super chats. <laughs> I'm streaming on Facebook. Do you see me now, mom? Fuck no, you, I, bitch. I think OJJ is onto something. And, and then at the end, you have, at the bottom, you have a little goal that says 1,000, and maybe I won't do it. Oh, oh my god. No. That's such a That's such a hold yourself bucks. ransom. You gotta hold yourself ransom. Yeah, you wanna know how to make money? What you gotta do is be like, eh, for the first person to give me a hundred bucks, they get to pick what I use. 
And then, oh god. And then they get to give you instructions on how to do it per like dollar amount until at the very end when you just that was genius, turn the okay. stream off to take the cash. You take that shit, you put like a thousand buck sort of uh, cap on it and you know, you either have an explosive vest and you set it so if you get a thousand bucks the vest goes off, it's, or better yet in an electric chair, the second you reach a thousand bucks, you just get zapped to death like, yeah, we made it boys! You know what, I gotta, I gotta talk to my editor real quick, I got some ideas I gotta run by him. Yeah! <laughs> Dude, that, that's actually very interesting, I never thought about that, you know, like, live suicide but for profit. You should do that, Mo. <laughs> no! I, I mean, number one, I can only do it once, and yeah, number two... could be a trend you, well, hang on. On. you never Excellent. know, you could pull an Epstein and die. Uh, no, because then I have to have, I ha I'd have to sex a bunch of children, and I'm not about to do oh. that. Well, you know, to skip those steps, those were just like, they're like side quests. You know, you don't have to do them, it's just recommended. <laughs> you just need damning information on the God Clinton. Damn. Oh, yeah, you got that, you got that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, alright, so get, getting back on track to the story I was about to tell, I was on sitting on a bench, uh, waiting for the bus, right? And this homeless lady came up to me, she had her headphones on, right? And she was singing a song, snapping her fingers and all that. And I noticed that my shoelaces were untied, so I went to tie my fucking shoes, and I happened to look to the right of me where she was sitting, and I saw that her headphones were, a headphone jack was just dangling, not plugged into anything. <laughs> so that's when I stood up and just decided to pretend I was just stretching my legs, and really, I was just walking away from this crazy homeless bitch. <laughs> I like to imagine you just sort of stood up as like, yeah, let me just stretch my leg, and then you just went into full sprint away from her, like, nope. Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm too fat and sassy for that, man. I'm not about to uh, run. Fuck that shit. What do you mean sassy? <laughs> mm -hmm. sassy snap, snap, run. snap. You could roll around at the speed of sound. <laughs> just turn into one of those critters. <laughs> oh my god. Or a popple. Oh, roundhouse kicker in the fucking face. <laughs> I'm um, gonna make a popple that looks like Mo. Oh god, oh, shut up. God. No, 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 we're not gonna do that. Wait, uh, are you and me the only one that know what a popple is? Yeah, I fucking, Yeah, I know what a fucking popple is, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a saying, product, I'm a product I'm of saying, the are 80s. You and I, are you and I the only one that know what a popple is? Oh. It's like, are we that old? I just googled them. These things are kind of terrifying. They oh, are, I'm dude. Oh, that. Mo is like this southern fat Jesus, right? He just goes around. Incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> Incorrect. All right. No, what no, correct. <laughs> With a C. All right, all right. So, uh, uh, Birdstock, we'll go ahead and end the drug and homelessness talk with you, man. Have you ever experienced either one of those? And uh, what's your favorite experience from doing drugs or whatever have you? Uh, I've never been homeless yet, but. <laughs> Soon. Um, did you look at Riley as soon as you said that? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward um, spiral. But I've, I don't know, I've done weed, coke, I drink a lot. Weed. Yeah, I've done weed. Uh, I've tried acid like three times. My favorite drug experience was I actually Road Rage Minneapolis and took acid the night of the show. Oh, shit. You gave it to Clay. It's your fault this happened. Yeah, I, I did give it to Clay. It is my fault. You started all that. You can think Bird. It's not my fault when Clay can't burn, handle his acid. No shit. So that was so uh, Road Rage Minneapolis. That would have been your uh, favorite on acid experience? Yeah. All right, was, so... Did you did you experience uh, like any kind of like tracers or like something profound or was it just a fucking trip or do you even remember any of it? Uh, I remember most of it. It was kind of like it was a mix of things. I would hang out in the backyard of the Airbnb and just watch these trees fucking breathe, and it was really oh. neat. And then oh, just, dude, yeah, it was fucking cool. There was this one black tree that I kept focusing on, but. Anyway, then I went inside and spent about an hour trying to put my suit on because I couldn't figure out how to tie a tie. And that was kind of annoying, actually. Um, <laughs> I just kept fucking doing different things that were not correct, and then eventually someone tied it for me. <laughs> um, and I was, I've, I was drinking this whole time, too, like gin and tonics and ciders. Um, yeah, oh god. And... 
Clay came up, Clay got to the Airbnb and was like, hey man, how's it going? And I just said, I'm on acid. And he said, oh, that sounds really nice. I don't even think he asked for it. And I was just like, okay, do you want some? So yeah, it's totally my fault. That's the way he was. Oh, he, he was asking. <laughs> um, and then we got to the show, and it was just fucking fun. I met a groovy goth chick who convinced me that homelessness is not the worst thing in the world. Um, I don't know. It, I don't remember a lot of specifics, but after we went to the bar, Did you fucking call her goth. Is she punk? Punk. Punk, I apologize. Punk. punk. You gotta get your subgroups right. Man. Adam, Adam man. That's terrible. A, that's Shoot a me. very big faux pas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, just that's like true. calling Abercrombie and Fitch Hot Topic. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, continue. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. There's not a specific thing that made the night stand out. I just, like, felt a bunch of love. If that makes any sense. No, no, no. I, I at the show that I was talking about, the POD show at Ozfest 2000, man. That's exactly uh, uh, what I felt. I completely understand that. I felt the exact same way when I was hanging out with some buddy of mine in a trailer in this old fucking hick town near me, and uh, we just gobbled a fucking handful of mushrooms a piece, and I just started fucking watching the fucking trailer walls like breathe in and out like a living organism. And uh, it's usually, it's like I connect with the universe, like the way that you're talking about at Road Rage, like every time I do a hallucinogen. I haven't done it in years and years, and I think I'm too old to do either one of those these days. But yeah, man, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mo, have you ever tried DMT? I've never tried DMT. Oh, fucking DMT is amazing. I don't know, man. Like, I, I hear some gnarly shit. Yeah, tell us more. Yeah, we'll we'll end the drug talk on you, and then we'll uh, just start talking about life, and we'll wrap it up. That sound good, fellas? Yeah. All right, good, good. Uh, go ahead and tell us about DMT, man. Wait, me? Uh, yeah, you're the one that said it, right? Well, I, I said I like DMT. Oh, oh, okay, you fucker. Have you ever done it before? And, like, tell us a story. Yeah, like, yeah oh, okay, no, okay, so the first time I did DMT... <laughs> Oh shit! Hey, don't you cry, little dude. So the first time I did DMT, um, I met this random ass hippie dude, and uh, he just kind of like walked up to me. He's probably like twenty something. He's like, "You want to do DMT, man?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Because I remember, I, I believe you. No, <laughs> no, actually, actually, no. He put the DMT on the weed. <laughs> It's like trippy band, like wow. <laughs> so no, okay. So he's like, I, I'm like, yeah, sure. I, I, I've heard about it. Like, I'm, I'm down to do some shit. I'm basically homeless. I'm totally down to like do some like inner exploring. And he's like, but you have to do a quest first. Hell yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah. all right. And I'm so like, all right. What kind of quest? He's like, we must trek. And I'm like, like Star Trek. <laughs> all right. So like. We uh we we proceed to go from uh the UT campus area uh down a hill and then cutting through like different neighborhoods and then suddenly we're climbing a fence over some cactuses um or into some cacti cac cacti cacti cactus cacti cactoids <laughs> cactoids <laughs> cacti so cacti. we 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 we're, we're walking through a field of pokey guys. <laughs> and, uh, and like, uh, so we we end up getting to um, shit. I forget, I forget the name of the park, but irrelevant. Uh, we get over there, and he's and he's just like that tree. And now, mind you, we've gone probably about like thirty, forty five minutes just to get to a tree that we could literally have walked down a hill and been there in five minutes. But that was the quest. I'm guessing because he points at this big ass tree, like big old, like the giving tree looking motherfucker, like kind of like Deku shit going on. And he's like, lean up against the tree. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, cause apparently you're my guru now. Um, <laughs> and uh, this whole time, I forget to mention this whole time I had a corn cob pipe that I stole from an antique shop when I was coming down hitchhiking through Route 66. He had packed it with some weed in it. And I had to hold that pipe 
without hitting it the entire time with my thumb over it. Uh, which I think may have also been part of the quest. So anyway, I sit up against this tree. He dumps the, these fucking like crystals and shit in there. He like tells me how to do it, blah, blah, like hit it, hold it, blah, blah, blah. And there was a tree directly in front. And at about the time that I exhaled, a bee flew past my peripheral and became like straight into my like straight line of sight and flew into this tree. Uh, for after that, it pretty much just like, I, I, I wouldn't say it like vaporized away, but it, 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 dissip it dissipated away into a seed, into like a time lapse, for, into a sapling, into a bigger tree and a bigger tree and all this shit going on around it. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it essentially like saw the life of the tree and um, the occurrences surrounding the tree in its existence up until it was the one that i was looking at in that exact present time and fucking b came flew back hit me right in my forehead and that was pretty much the whole trip oh yes yeah. that's amazing it felt like, cool. probably like a half an hour and i was maybe there for five minutes the guy had said i can't was... wait to do dmt because i really like monkeys i like monkeys a lot I'm a big fan. Gorillas of all kinds. <laughs> I like orangutan. You know, they're cool. Yeah. Alright, so, man, we, we've been through the ups and downs and all that, so, like, how, what do you think of life? Has life been really good to you? Do you have a, a rosy perspective, or do you think it's all, like, hopeless and doomed? Uh, Riley, let's start with you, man. What do you think about life? Hopeless and doomed. Love a love it up, dub. Downward spiral. Downward spiral. Downward spiral. All right, Bird Sock. What do you think, man? I approach every day with a pair of rose-colored glasses on. Every oh, day. I like that. Every day. Is that is that like a sort of like comedic to you, or is that like literally how you need to maintain your sanity in these crazy trying times? I would say a bit of both. A little bit I, of both? I, I enjoy being a happy person, but also, if I'm not a happy person, I just want to kill myself all the time. Let me, uh, no, no, let, let me just, uh, put it this way. Uh oh. <laughs> Bird's, uh, favorite movie of the summer is gonna be Joker. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it does look like a good movie. Like, I, I like the, uh, the last trailer that they released. I think that made the movie look a little bit better. And so I'm kind of looking forward to it now. He still looks like someone's uncle trying to hang out with their, like, juggalo nephew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he's a manlet, too. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, Joaquin Phoenix is, like, uh, five how, how tall? 5'8"? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, JJ, what do you think, man? What do you think about life? I think that thinking is a bad idea. I try not to do it. That's why I'm a streamer. Yeah. <laughs> just throw yourself to the freaking mob and have them define your existence yeah just be a formless shapeless fucking blob and play dragon quest in front of a camera or something <laughs> I, I mean, anyway, I mean, you, you really are a shapeless blob ah not anymore Tom now oh. I'm a shapeless blob but with less mass thanks to the toasters Oh, that's good, that's good. Oh, you're gay as well? Congratulations, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov. <laughs> Riley you're just became to... gay. I always had a hunch. I always had a hunch of AJ. You know, uh -huh. with weird hair and stuff. I always had a hunch of your, like, hairless chest and stuff that you were gay. I'm glad you finally came to terms with it. <laughs> hairless chest? When did you see that? Yeah. On your stream, I've never seen a single hair on your fucking chest, man. Look a little closer, baby. Yes. Maybe tell me attempt the quality. Next next time I'm over, I'll take a very closer look. Maybe make a make a little donation. I'll show a little bit more. <laughs> Ooh. I'm uh, glad you're a titty streamer now as well. Yeah, bend over, write your name oh, on the whiteboard. Uh, speaking of speaking of titty streamers, before we le uh, end this, can we address that that stupid fucking Sans song has to be in every titty streamer's Nintendo play now. Oh, every dude. time they play Smash, it's only going to be like 
The customized options are going to be to turn off the entire soundtrack of the game, except for Undertale. Um, oh, Metalovania. Very dude, epic. As dude, a professional Smash player, I cannot wait. Dude, it's like every fucking chick in the world has to like Undertale, and I don't even think half of them have played it. Dude, every gay person, I, I everybody that's even slightly flamboyant fucking loves Undertale because it's such a quirky game. Look at it. It's I so had a strange. fucking girlfriend in high school who had an Undertale backpack and was like Undertale fan music, but had never played the fucking game. Mm. Because it was cute, like that it's a cute thing. Go fuck yourself. And Nate wants to battle. Whatever he's doing now, he can go fuck himself too. No, fan geez. music for video games is cancer. It's yeah, why it, it fucking MLP is. MLP songs are cringy garbage. Ch- check out mine and Hazen Cruz's Discord parody. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're trash. They're dumb fucking songs, and people shouldn't make them. And Undertale has a million of them. And oh, the, yeah, the fan base is absolute trash. It, it made me not ever want to play video games again. Oh I only God. play Rocket League because anything else, too much like Undertale. If it has a plot, that's Undertale. If it has oh. RPG elements, Undertale. If it has characters, I lo- Undertale. I love Rocket League. <laughs> Let's play Rocket League together. Definitely, definitely. All right, uh, Brian, man, go ahead and go. Uh, just, where am I? Where am I'm, I'm sorry, my my bad, my bad. Uh, what, what do you think about the life, the universe, everything? Forty-two. <laughs> Okay, what do you think about life? Let's be serious now. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> that was really Put it good. together. Put it together. Brian, you'd love my prank call show, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. If I ever get my um, buddy Brian, if I get I ever get my buddy Paul on, man, we'll do prank calls and shit with you, man. I, it's been a while since I did those. Oh, dude, I missed those. But, uh, man, no, uh, like, so my thoughts on life, um, I don't know. Like, it's kind of it's it, life is fucking bullshit. Uh, the way like I mean like when you really think about it, and like I don't know. Uh, which one of y'all said just be a streamer, just just exist? Like, nah, fuck that. Uh, like, that just was have me. fun. Yes, just exist. Yeah. Just fucking fuck all the bullshit. Like, uh, I mean. I'm not saying, like, everyone should, like, go hop trains and, like, you know, hop a train, ruin your life, get a face tattoo. Um, but, you know, <laughs> just, like, I don't know. The life life is a joke. And um, there's Cornwall, no punchline. Honk, honk. I used to think <laughs> yeah. my life was a tragedy. But then I realized it's a comedy. It's a... <laughs> honk, 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 honk. <laughs> All right, Tommy, uh, I guess you're going to be the last guy. You're going to close this out. How long has uh, what, been what the stream going on for? It's, oh, I guess, a little while. An hour and well, well, we might end at 420. Oh, there uh, we go. Hell yeah. Uh, well, what, uh, what are your thoughts on, on well, life, Tommy? If, y- if y'all have, like, another hour for me to explain, no, I just think life is what you make of it. You set a goal, and then you go for it. If you fail and face any adversities along the way, it's just part of it, I guess. I agree with But that. most of the time, it's just, you know... You grow, you learn. If you have a cushy life, then you don't really develop. If you have a hard life, then, well, you develop a lot, and you're very different from others. You know, just do what makes you happy, but don't overdo it, because then those things won't really have effect. So just live your life as you as you see it fit. Just don't overdo it. You ever think that the deck, uh, the uh, deck, ugh. you ever think that the deck stacked against you? Such is life, man. You gotta. Such you gotta is play life. The All right. La vie. Yeah, pretty so much say la vie. All right, man. Well, guys, this has been a fucking great show. I think this is going to be my favorite fucking uh, episode that I've done, man. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Riley and Birdstock. You guys got anything you want to hop? ASCpresents.com has all of our content on it for free. Uh, Patreon.com slash ASCpresents has early access to all the new stuff we're going to be doing. I'm bringing back this like Power Ranger podcast I used to do called the Mighty Morphin Power Hour, where each week me and my guests talk about our two favorite pop culture franchises, mine being Power Rangers, theirs being whatever they bring in, and we riff about like how those could cross over or interact. Um, I'm going to be doing like two episodes of that a week on Patreon, but yeah, uh, I do a prank call show. I do other stuff. I've got a Western review podcast coming out. Oh, spaghetti neat. Spaghetti Westerns with the kids' spaghetti productions who floats around the Dick Show community. 
making content. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Right. And you can uh, find me on Twitter at Bird O Feathers. All right. Nice, nice. Uh, OJJ, you got anything for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I play video games and shit on Twitch. OJJ, J U J. Make sure you get the right amount of J's, otherwise you'll get some like Pakistani guy who thinks trying to. Links in the description. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I gave my I gave my little editing slave in the basement all the footage from from SheepCon, so that should be up at some point. He's been slaving over that, so when that's out, that'll be out. That's cool, amazing. Cool. Holy shit! All right, Brian. And you got anything for us to hawk? <clears throat> Who's Brian? Uh, Leslie Forties, whatever. <laughs> Well, whatever name you're going by this fucking week. Today, today I'm tickle me hell no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yesterday no, it was it was Mo son of mine. I was like, dude, I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> All right, go um, ahead. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really have anything to hawk. I'm actually just like getting uh, getting my recent uh, music project up, which oh, is okay. on. Uh, Facebook as Drag Rat Survivor. Uh, I don't really have uh, YouTube and all that stuff up yet because um, baby kind of consumes my life. Right, right, right. But um, you know, in in the time, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Just Drag Rat Survivor. Um, I'm sure like I'll lab. hop on here. Oh, definitely, dude. Um, I, I'm, I'm, a rapper. I'm, I'm a lesbian totally rapper. down, dude. Okay. I'm 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 totally uh, not a rapper. <laughs> which is why i need you no, um, yeah hell yeah if you can make music instrument stuff sound goods things i can do lesbian rap on it <laughs> <laughs> all right uh tommy you got everything uh, anything uh, yeah twitch.tv slash ojjjuj nice oh okay Wait, good, no, good, no. good uh patreon.com <laughs> forward slash hysterios all right man <laughs> Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 don't say that. Com I can say that Jason word, Mo. Said. I can say that fucking freely whenever I want. It's yeah, true, I'm I've gay. seen him. I can also say that word. I'm... All right, all right, you, you crazy so-and-sos. Wait, uh, wait, are, you, are you part of the fold? No, what? Mazel tov l'chaim? No, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. This has been the MoCast. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it, everyone. Uh, links will be in the description. I appreciate all y'all. Let's try to get to 100 listens and uh, 50 downloads. We did fucking fantastic with Gator and Hazen Cruz last week, and I want to thank everyone who participated in that, uh, hawked all my shit, retweeted all my stuff, and just generally had my back. Thanks so, for getting banned on Twitter for all of us. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. I, I was your, I was your Scott Stapp, your, uh, your, your holy martyr for the Zoe Quinn body count just, just hashtag. Doing it, man. You know that when the system now. is removing you, that you're doing the right thing. Fucking Keep a. Keep into the infinite. Fucking a. All right. Until next time, everyone. Ta ta. All right. Back all to right. work, man. All right. Thanks for coming out, OJJ. Yeah, no problem. Bye. Come on my Power Ranger podcast. Yeah.